Okie dokie, talking about comparing decimals, figuring out which one is bigger, which one is smaller. Now, it might seem like it's straightforward, but there's a few things that kind of mess with your brain when you're first learning about decimals. So, the problem we'll talk about first is just which of these bags weighs more. Okay, three and 281 thousandths versus three and 95 thousandths. So let's think about how we compared whole numbers. So if I have these two whole numbers and I had asked you which one is more, what might they do? Well, we might look at the ten thousands first and say, oh, look, they both have six ten thousands. But if I go to the thousands, seven thousands is more than five thousands. So this top one is bigger. Notice that we do not start at this side and we don't say, oh, look, six ones is bigger than one one. So this one must be bigger. No, because those are just ones. Those are little versus a thousand. The seven thousand counts a lot more than just the one. So seven thousand bigger than five thousand. So that's how we would compare them. Same thing works with decimals. So on your note, on your notes, Starting at the greatest place value, I'd write that on your notes because we always start from the left side. If you want to write yourself a note, you can do that as well. But starting at the greatest place value, we can compare the digits in each place value position. Again, the bigger parts count for more than the teeny little parts. Think back to when we talked about like how big a tenth is versus how big a thousandth is. A tenth is bigger than a thousandth, so it counts for more. So we'll look at some examples of decimals, obviously. So it helps if we write them in a chart, okay, which we have here. I didn't put one on your page because, frankly, you can just write them on top of each other. Just make sure to line up the decimals. Okay, I can't put them sideways because I want the ones with the ones, the tenths with the tenths. So if I line up my decimal points, that can help. Um, if you take a lined piece of paper and turn it sideways, you can even use the lines to help guide you. Or I can write them in a chart if I have one, but I don't always have one. Sorry, I totally forgot my numbers in that two seconds. So I could write this, I think those are the right numbers, and that helps me keep them in the same place. But again, I don't always have one of those. So I still should line them up even if I don't have a chart. Um, so we start by comparing the ones place. So, sorry, I should have left that. If I had those lined up, I would start and say, okay, let's look at my ones. Well, those are the same, right? So I can't judge based on that. So I have to keep going to the next place over, which I believe is the next slide. So then after I look at my ones, if that's the same, I look at the next one. Come on, computer, you can do it. There we go. So after we do the ones, if that's tied, then we look next door at the tenths. The two is bigger than the zero. So we know this top one, the purple one, is bigger. Next, we go to the tenth place. Whew, goodness, I guess it's getting tired. Maybe like your brain. Hopefully not, though, because this is really just lining up the decimals, looking. I have some other tips if we, um, if that helps. All right, so like I said, the tenth, the two is bigger than the zero. Two tenths is greater than zero tenths. So it doesn't even matter what's over here because those are much smaller pieces. So then we could write a what we call a comparison statement. 
before we do that, I do want us to review what the different symbols are because I know sometimes we forget. So on your notes, that first one that looks like that is the greater than symbol. And I know oftentimes fifth graders have an easier time putting it in because they know that the alligator needs to eat the bigger number, but sometimes they forget what it's actually called. So the first number is greater than the second number, which makes this one less than. And then uh, I'll squeeze it in there. That is equal to as you might imagine. So make sure those are written on your paper in case you need to look back at them. Also remember you need to like face the open mouth towards the bigger number. So then if we would write a statement, we could say three and 281,000 is greater than three and 95,000. So go ahead and write that on your paper just to practice writing out sort of a full comparison statement, as we may call it. So again, which bag weighs more? The purple one, because it is a bigger number. All right, we're going to keep going. So we do with this, we compare decimals the same way as we do multi-digit numbers. So I wrote the steps down on your paper just to help you have a place to look back. So you write the numbers, lining up the decimals. You start at the left and you go until you get to a digit that's different and the one with the bigger digit is bigger. One other tip I will show you is if, say I had something like um, three and nine tenths versus three, and 81 hundredths. It's really tempting to say, well, 81 is bigger than nine, so that one must be bigger. But if I line them up, I can see, oh, three is the same. Oh, nine is bigger than eight. So nine is, this one is actually bigger. And the three and nine tenths is greater. That can mess with your mind. So if you add a zero at the end to make them the same length, that can help our brains. Cause then we can say, oh, 90 is bigger than 81. 90 hundredths is bigger than 81 hundredths. So that's how I can tell which one is bigger. So either line them up and go by the place or add zeros to make them the same length. And then that helps. All right, now let's do some practice. So if we say, Which symbol makes it true? Go ahead and pick what you think. All right, hopefully, again, there's space. Sorry, half sentences. Make sure you write it down if you need to. There's space on your notes if that helps, um, or you can get out lined paper, or I can get you lined paper. So if I line them up, make sure I line up the decimal and start at the left. I have seven holes and eight holes. Eight holes is bigger, so we know the first one is going to be less than that one. It's eating the bigger number. All right, again, pick the right one. Okay, hopefully we said one and 21 thousandths is less than one and 95 thousandths. Okay, if you need me to write these down for you, by all means, pause it and call me over. I don't want to spend too long because I know some of us probably get it. I do want to just show you some more examples. Here. So I'm trying to find the balance of going fast enough, but not too fast. If I'm going too, too fast for you. Let me know. Go ahead and pick this one, which is bigger, 6 and 55 hundredths versus 5 and 66 hundredths. All right, hopefully you said that first one because six is greater than five. So even though 66 hundredths is more than 55 hundredths, six holes is bigger than five holes or like $6.55 is bigger than $5 and anything. So I would say that symbol 
right, which makes it true. All right, we can see 9.9 .9 has nine holes versus this one has zero holes. So nine holes is definitely bigger. Three and 41 hundredths versus three and 41 hundredths. Hopefully you realize those are equal. Even if one of them had a zero on the end, would still be equal. Or a bunch of zeros on the end. Still equal. All right, I'm going to actually keep scrolling. All right, I'm going to go to the next page because there's one that had a bunch of statements. So if we said, oops, here we go. Which of the following comparisons are true? Choose all that apply. All right. Now I have to sort of check them each out. I can't just find one and say, well, that must be right, because it says choose all that apply, which could be more than one. So if I say, okay, zero and 773, one and 773, that zero is smaller. So it's saying that this one is bigger, but it's not. So I'm not gonna pick that one. 101, 101, zero tenths, zero tenths, two hundredths, two hundredths has an extra zero, but this one could have an extra zero. So they are equal, which it says they are. So we can, we should pick that one. All right, these are both a four, but they're in a different spot. So let's look carefully. Let's line this one up because I think that'll help us. Notice how I might do different things for different ones. All right, so zero tenths, four tenths. Ooh, four tenths is bigger. Or if I add that zero and say, okay, four hundredths versus 40 hundredths, 40 hundredths is bigger. This is saying that this one is smaller, which it is. So I choose that one. And then 321 thousandths versus 123 ten thousandths. Again, when they get so long, it can be helpful to line them up. Zero, one, two, three. The same. Look here, three is bigger than zero, so we know this first one is bigger. Is that what it's saying? Nope, it's saying the first one is smaller, so I know that one is not right. So again, I went through all my options to double check I got all of them. If you need more examples, if you need help, let us know. We are here for you. Good luck.